Welcome to the Win Make Give Podcast Season 2. Chad Himes about winning. Bob Stewart, are you ready to win? I'm ready to win, Ben. Let's do it. Let's do it. Everybody, we really appreciate you being here. And sometimes you wake up and you just don't feel like being there. Gentlemen, have you ever woken up one day and just not felt like participating? Dare I say this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You know another feeling that I've gotten from time to time and and what we want to talk about today is sometimes you feel like quitting. Mm-hmm. Uh, quitting your job, quitting your relationship, quitting working out, yep. quitting eating good. Uh, there's a million things that we – sometimes we wake up and we say, you know what? I don't know why I'm doing this. What's the, what is even – the purpose. Yep. Felt that feeling before, Chad? Absolutely, Ben. Give me like one or two things that you felt like quitting before. Working out. You threw that in there sometimes because you don't see gains happening quickly. So sometimes you just want to throw your hands up in the air and say, forget this. Give me the pizza. Give me the chocolate. Give me the cookies and forget this workout thing. You said sometimes you want to do that, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> just sometimes, guys. Just sometimes. Bob, what do you feel like quitting? Oh, Ben, this is a loaded question. I mean, I've... Yeah, because you can't say your job. <laughs> I can't say my job. I mean, my wife listens to like probably one out of every five episodes we do, so I could maybe throw in my marriage and, and hope she didn't hear that, right? But like, I mean, relationships for me has been a hard thing. Like, I've been a shitty partner most of my life, and so, you know, up until I met my wife, uh, there was a lot of relationships where I spent a lot of time thinking I should quit this, I should quit this, and the reality is probably in the beginning of my relationship with my wife, I, I, I had that a lot. Crap, I mean, some days I wake up and I want to quit being a parent. Ben, it's hard work raising a three and a four year old, and it's they're 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 all the time. They're everywhere. They're they're always on. Like there's days I wake up and I'm like, man, I wish somebody else could do this job for me. You know, I mean, there's yeah, there's no return button on that kid once they pop out. Like no, you can't, no takesy backsies. No, no takesy backsies. No, you just you got to keep going, right? So those are the days when I really like rely on something to drive me through. That you can't quit on your kids, right? Yep. I've had you know lots of people. Um, approach me with conversations and my thousand foot view of the conversation was they they didn't believe that I ever felt that way that their feeling of wanting to quit was something isolated just to them Mm -hmm. they didn't understand that that's actually a feeling that most of us experience in in some ways quite often I was having a conversation with a group of individuals yesterday and I said if you don't ever feel like quitting, you're probably not pushing yourself hard enough. That's a great point, Ben. Yeah. You, it's easy to work out all the time if you consider working out, walking from the car to the house. Yep. Right? That's, uh, I'm not going to quit that, right? But if you were really pushing yourself hard, there has to be moments in, in Chad's brain when he says, you know what, I would just maybe I should just walk yes. and, and, and stop running to this moment, right? Well, here's the thing. We all feel that way. It's something that's natural. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling that way, then maybe you should sit back for a few moments and say, what do I need to do to live up to my potential and push myself a little bit harder? I go back, you know, you always talk about um, growth happens when we get uncomfortable and a lot. And if we're comfortable, we're not going to quit that thing. Walking from the car to the house, that's comfortable, right? It's when you get uncomfortable that you start to run into these these times when you want to quit. Yeah, I try to put myself into positions where, I'm uncomfortable physically or mentally or emotionally, right? Because that's where that's where the growth happens. So today, I want to talk about a list of reasons that I wrote down for myself about the times in my life when I've wanted to quit and what the triggers were. In my mind, that there's that there are things that trigger us to be depressed or be unhappy or to want to quit or to give up or to push harder or or to feel bad or or be emotional these are triggers and if you're going to identify the triggers bob then maybe you can minimize the effects of it or minimize the low points in your world so i identified a handful of triggers it's another win make give podcast list Yay. chad that was the enthusiasm. Uh, we need like Dave. We need a sound, sound effect. effect it's like doom, doom, <laughs> like the list dropped or something. That's in my head what it sounds like, Dave. That was arguably the worst yay I've ever got out of Chad. <laughs> yay! 
That was arguably the Second most <laughs> awkward, <laughs> the most awkward one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's go through another win make give list. Why we want to quit? Number one, we get bored. Mm. We get bored. We get bored in our relationship. We get bored in our workout. We get bored at work. In fact, I heard somebody famous say this once. We get bored with what works, so we start working on what doesn't work. I Think about that sentence, how dumb that is. We get bored with what works, right? So then we quit to start doing something. That we hope works? Yeah. 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 Did I ever talk about my, my buddy on this podcast uh, that bought the taco truck? No, no, I think we're in yeah, for a new story. And he's a regular, regular Win Make Give listener. So as you're listening to this, uh, I'm, I'm talking to you. So this guy called Drive me. by on a recording day is what he needs to do so we can have tacos for Right. Lunch. He, he says, you know, I'm kind of struggling in my life and my career, and I need to make some changes. I don't necessarily love what I'm doing and, and who I'm doing it with and that sort of thing. I said, great. And he said, would you mind coaching and talking me through this decision? Absolutely. I'm always into help a listener out and talk to them and help them make a great life decision. So I give him some advice and we start talking about a strategy and then I don't hear from him. And like a month later, he texts me, he said, guess what? I said, what? He said, things are going great. I'm like, tell me about it. He's like, I bought a taco truck. And I'm like, <laughs> you bought an effing taco truck? What are you talking about? What are you doing? Right? Your last thing was not working the way you wanted. So you added another thing that sucked. No. Friendly listener who I love and adore, you don't buy the taco truck. Well, this this weekend he texted me and said, guess what? I sold, sold the, the taco, taco truck. truck. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he sold it. It's out of, out of his life, and he sold it for a little bit less than what he paid for it. Uh, lost some money, but he got to move on, and now he's back on the straight and narrow and focused on the next exciting part of his life. But here's what that really was. He got bored with right. what works. Yep. So he started working on what doesn't work. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I mean, it makes sense when you say it. It doesn't make sense when we do it necessarily. No, no we, but we do it, don't, don't yeah, we? We've we do all it, done absolutely. it. Yeah. We get bored in relationships, so we start looking for something else that's more exciting. We I get think, bored of the workout, whatever that might be. You know my first business partner, and we're all friends, and he was, this was him, right? He, he would, we'd get something, and things would be going good, and he'd be like, I'm bored. And he'd go do something else. And it was just a pattern where you could tell he'd get to a place where we'd built a business to a pretty good place and he got bored with it. And, and you know, that's part of his nature, right? He was an entrepreneur that needed to be doing something new. But man, we had a lot of times where we got to that place where things were going pretty good and he'd get bored. I did that plenty in my life. My parents could predict when I was going to quit something because I got bored doing it. They knew, oh, he's at that point. Here it comes. Nita's done the same thing where she'll look at me after a certain period or length of time and be like, are you still okay doing what you're doing? Because I know you're going to get bored. And thankfully, with coaching and learning from someone like Ben over the years, it's gotten me to realize boredom isn't a bad thing. And it's definitely not a reason to quit. No, but it definitely is a trigger yes. for wanting to quit. And sometimes success actually happens by continuing to hit the same nail over and over again. That's what creates mastery right? That's, that's where the compounding effect uh, shows up. Like it's boring to invest $10 a day or $100 a month or $1,000 a month consistently into something that isn't exciting like the S&P 500. Yet you wake up in 10, 20, 30 years and you are financially set. Right. It's bored to, right, to continue to do this job or, or whatever. It's tough. So the number in no particular order. The first reason why we quit is boredom. And before I go to the second one, I want to point out this is also a list of reasons why people quit your company, people quit being in relationship with you, people quit working for you, people quit using your product or a service. They're running into the same problem. That's why this is such an important conversation today so that you realize that these are all triggers for you and they're also triggers for people in your world. Got it. Number two, people quit because they hit a ceiling. Now, Bob, let's be literal for a second. If you stood up and you hit a ceiling, how would that feel? Uh, not very good. I'd no, probably, it would hurt. Yeah, I'd have a bump on my head. Yeah, especially Bob's always got this baseball cap yeah. on. It has the little metal thing in the <laughs> yeah. center and, it, and when you bonk it, it hurts your head, right? Yeah, for sure. What if you do it twice? 
then I'm an idiot. <laughs> so <he's, laughs> yeah. I'm a moron. Yeah, I, sh I should have not stood up as far this time. I yeah, mean, you're a moron. You're an idiot. It hurts. You more did it twice, and it hurts more because the first time I had a bruise, and now I you got a bruise. Now I got an extra one, right? Yeah. Well, that is the ceiling. Imagine you work really, really hard. You run this business. You you make your cheeseburgers. You sell your widgets. You do whatever, and every year you make the same amount of money. You hit a ceiling. Yep. You start asking yourself. What in the hell am I working so hard for if I can't ever break through this thing? We want to quit when we consistently hit the ceiling because it hurts and we want it to stop hurting. Instead of finding a way to chip away through that ceiling, right, we say, oh, it, it might just be easier to walk the other direction. Well, people in our worlds do the same exact thing when they continue to make the same amount of money or they continue to get the same amount of results, they run into the ceiling. You know, you you have a one aspect of your business is you partner with these professionals that have been out there bumping their head against the ceiling. And they're more, a lot of them are at a place where they're thinking about blowing their team up or doing something different, right? Because they've just, they've been at this ceiling and you're able to show them a way past that ceiling and then they don't end up quitting. They actually had all the tools that they needed, the hammer, the nails, the screwdriver, and the tape measure. They're, it was already strapped to them. They just weren't using it in the right order, so they continue to hit a ceiling, Chad, and then they want to quit. Can you think of any other examples for, for ceilings that you've seen or for yourself? Yep. I left you 10 years ago or five, six, seven years ago for another opportunity because I felt like I had hit a ceiling. So I started looking at other things that I thought had higher ceilings. Uh, yeah, savage. That is savage, I, Chad. Hey, just, and I've come back there and it said, is. I've come back and said, I should have stuck it out. I should have been using the tools properly, yet I still had an amazing opportunity and an amazing experience well, here, that I'll, came from it. I know all all uh that's that's partly Ben's fault, right? Like you didn't see any way through that ceiling. And Partially. and maybe that's on you for not coming to him and you guys having that conversation and whatever it is, but that's just as much his fault for not giving you any way to get through that ceiling. Same right? thing just... he said before. These things are, might be triggers for us. They're also triggers for why people leave us. Yeah. And I've told that story that I felt like I hit a certain place and Ben wasn't ready for me to go higher and what he was building at the time yet. I felt like I was at a ceiling. I saw something else, so I made the mistake and quit. Now, at the same time, I made the best of the choice that I made, I've made fantastic relationships, and I've come back a better person for it. And now I'm able to see much higher levels above me as I hit each ceiling and keep going. Basically, Chad's saying that I'm kind of like an STD. I just keep coming back into his <laughs> life. Like, I'm a rash. I'm growing on Chad's leg. He tried to get rid of me. And then, boom, bada boom, I come back as a rash. And now, Bob Stewart, he is actually 100%. Stuck with me. But no, I, I would say uh, Chad made the right decision by leaving what he did. And I hope that he made the right decision by coming back. I didn't have a world big enough to support him in the areas that he wanted to focus on at the time time that he left. Now, the cool thing was, is that I said, hey, my door's always open. Yep. I love you like a friend and a brother. And we can still do lots of things together. And if you ever want to come back, you can come back. And I will tell you, because of the relationships built, and again, we're talking about quitting and people quitting us, but he was always a mentor. I don't think I made a business decision in my life from the day I left without still consulting with him. And even when he told me don't make certain decisions, I made them anyway. <laughs> but I had the conversation at least that I could have with someone that I knew would be honest and help me see the ceilings that I was going to run into. And I get the unique benefit of being able to say, I freaking told you so. Yes, you do. I told you so. Yes, you do. And uh, <laughs> I get the same thing back from these guys. So the number two reason why we feel like quitting or why our people quit us, as Chad so eloquently illustrated in my own <laughs> poor leadership, is... Uh, we hit a ceiling. We hit ceilings. Number three. Number three. No particular order. People feel like quitting because they get financially stressed. They realize they might be being successful in their business, but financially they're not getting ahead. Or they get a letter from the IRS, or they get uh, debt, or they have a bad month or two. And lawsuit. they weren't, We've had a yeah, lawsuit. Yeah, lawsuit. Right? They weren't prepared with reserves, whatever it might be. Yep. So the, at the first sign of financial stress, they start reacting. And they start reacting poorly, or we start reacting poorly, and we start looking for alternatives like uh, solutions to problems that were created over a long period of time. 
we start looking for an instant solution to it. You can't find an instant solution to a problem that was created over a long period of time. You need to find really a long-term solution to a long-term problem, yeah. if that makes sense. Financial stress, IRS, debt, lack of net income in your business, lack of financial growth, any of those sort of things, they create a feeling for us where we feel like quitting. Now, I've also seen that when our employees have financial stress, they come in wanting to quit and they try to make it about us, but it's actually not. So if you slow down for a second and say, hey, I'd love to talk about whatever you're upset about, but before we do, can we just catch up? Can we just catch up with what's going on in your world? How are you? How is your spouse or your partner? Uh, how are you doing financially? Are you caught up? Have you paid the IRS? Do you have any debt? How much money are you making right now? Is that enough? Having those conversations, you might realize that the real problem is not the one they brought you. It's something entirely different. And if you try to solve the wrong problem, you'll actually never get ahead because they're going to come back next month stressed and upset about something else when really the underlying condition of that STD rash is is this financial stress, this 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 whatever that other problem is. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Does I'm, finances have that negative effect on you guys? Yeah, absolutely. It caused, I ran away from an opportunity when I owned a baseball school in Florida. We financially got ourselves upside. Boom, I knew I could make money as a waiter. Boom, quit, left, closed the company down, ran back to something where I knew I could make the money and immediately not have to deal with that issue any longer. Did you know that he owned a baseball school in Florida? Yeah, but uh, but it was definitely not top of my brain. That's one that's been floating around down somewhere about the stem for a yep. while. Yeah. Well, we should dig into that someday. Okay. Someday. Chad, the number three reason that we feel like quitting or our people feel like quitting is financial stress. What are some things that we could do to eliminate financial stress from us so that we don't run into that feeling every November, December, January, February, whenever the slow time of your life is yep. where you feel like quitting. Reserves, building reserves would be a, a first step. Yeah, build reserves so that you can withstand a long period of time, four months, five months, six months with zero income. Yep. What's another thing that we could do to uh, remove the, the financial reasons for wanting to quit? Eliminate debt so that we're in a position where if something is going wrong, we're not having to panic that someone's about to knock on our door and throw us out or take our car. I mean, the 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 extension of eliminating our debt is that we do have then that credit to pull on in a in a time of need, right? Yeah, sure. It also increases your net income. So taking the Michael McCallowitz approach of his book Profit First, yep. living off of uh, making your business margin be a specific amount and basing all of your expenses off everything else. Yep. So then you don't run in to that position. You know, Ben, I'd, I'd be doing a disservice to our audience if I didn't stop right here and say, taking the wealth series. Right? Yeah. And they should be going to winmakegive.com slash wealth, where they can then link up to the wealth series episodes, get the handouts that we did during the wealth series. Uh, you want to learn about reserves, you want to learn about eliminating debt, you want to learn about getting rid of that financial stress, the wealth series will definitely help walk you through those steps. Yeah, that's such a great, great point, Chad. I know that we're, we're one year away from, uh, uh, from when we first launched the wealth series. So very interesting to see the feedback from people and how much their life has changed financially in just one year. The number four, four. reason. Echo. Oh, yeah. four, 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 four. Is they're experiencing failure. And when you experience mm -hmm. failure, sometimes it's easier to just walk away. What is that failure? Uh, you lose your sales presentation. You try to hire somebody and they won't join you. You, you have a couple of your people quit. You attempt to assemble an Ikea bookcase or something like that. <laughs> How many times have we all walked away from all the parts in the middle of the room, <laughs> thrown our hands up in the air and went, that's it, I'm out. I probably think the last three times I've put one of those types of things together, I've gotten it all done and realized, like, what is that piece? Crap! <laughs> and just had to re you know, just back everything up. And yeah. <laughs> Failure yeah. is something we all experience, Ben. The question is, what do we do with it? So you're saying it's one of the reasons people don't always learn from the failure. Sometimes they just take the easy way out. Yeah. How 
ask yourself the question, how is failure affecting me and my mood? And what do I do about it? Do I use it as fuel for my fire to keep pushing tomorrow and say, I may have got my butt kicked today, but tomorrow I will not get my butt kicked, right? Or am I allowing every time we fail to have the thought go through my head, you know, screw this, I'm just going to go quit. That's such a tricky one because you go back to what you were talking about earlier. It's like if you don't push yourself and you're not getting uncomfortable, there's no growth. That's the same thing with if you're not failing every once in a while, like you're probably not going hard enough. Right. So you're going to have failure no matter what, or you should have some failure in your, in your business and in your life. Yeah. And if you aren't failing, I think as you're saying, Bob, you, are, you aren't failing fast enough, you're going to run into a problem. Why are we so good at hiring in our company? Because we've hired a thousand idiots that didn't work <laughs> out. Like, why are we so good at our sales presentations? Well, because we've done 10,000 of them, right? Why are our salespeople good at their sales calls? They've called 100,000 people. Right. Like, it comes from sucking and failing. That's where mastery and success actually comes. My point is, don't allow failure to create a conversation in your head that starts talking you down the path of doing something different, of which you're going to run into failure, and you're going to want to quit, and you're going to be moving from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing, never actually accomplishing anything in your life. What number are we at? That was number four, Ben. Give us number five. We want to quit in business or leadership or financially or work because we have personal issues going on that feel like this additional weight. We're fighting with a spouse or a partner. Our kids are having behavioral issues or our kids are, are depressed or suicidal or drug issues. Uh, there's, there's something going on with our health yep. or with our parents' health. There's something else and those manifest in business and in work with, I can't do all this at once. What should I give up? And we tend to give up the one stable good thing in our life to try to go solve all the things that are chaos. And that's probably the wrong move. The reason I bring this one up is a lot of times when people are withdrawing from you, your company, or actually quitting, there's probably something else that's going on in their world that we should think about asking like hey bob what's going on personally how are the kids how are the spouse you're so good at this like this particular one is not so like financial stress could come out of nowhere right all of a sudden you get the letter from the irs this or a one bill for something yeah so, yeah this one though if you're paying attention the signs are generally there right they 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 you know they used to show up five days a week all the time every day all day and, and now they're not there on fridays anymore right and then it's you know, you can never find them in the afternoons and this, this grows. You're so good at staying connected to us. You know, if I don't, if you don't hear from me for two or three days, it's a call late at night or a text message. Hey man, how's it going? Is everything good? You're always there. I feel like that door's always open. And sometimes I'll respond to you and say, nah, man, like, man, these kids are driving me insane. I got to find something to do with them. Like COVID we're in the house all day long, you know, but you're uh, you're really good at staying in tune with that. So I don't think you're probably rarely caught off guard by something happening in one of our lives. You know, it, it happens every now and then, I'm assuming, but, but not often for you. Well, I know that it affects people's performance and people's relationship with me, so it's important to us that we know about that. I remember calling Bob one night, and sometimes Bob and I talk after his wife and kids go to bed and just to check in, and Chad's, like, been asleep for six hours. Oh, yeah, and I'm fast asleep. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, Bob, what's going on? He's like, you're not going to believe this. My, my son just stood on top of his bed and, <laughs> and peed all over the bed. I'm like, no kidding. Like, <laughs> what amazing birth control. No kidding. No kidding. Tell me about that. And I said, what would you do? He's like, I immediately sent him down to talk to his mom. And I said, what would you do? He's like, well, then I ripped the sheets off and I took him down to the washer and dry. I'm like, Bob, Bob, where'd you screw up there, Bob? <laughs> What, what did I tell you to do? I he should have made him clean it up, like rubbed his nose in it. Like he did. That's what right. Ben would do to his dog, right? He'd rub his <laughs> nose in it and then yeah. he'd make, make, um, Taupo, like, you know, eat up his own poop or whatever. But, you know, yeah, I would have tied I your kid up in a knot in the center of those <laughs> sheets and let him sit there till he realized that he would never, never pee on those sheets again. Some people, which is reason 476. Not I do not have it. kids. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, personal issues. Ask yourself the question, is there something else going on in my life right now that's, a, that's causing me to want to quit in this other area, business, life, 
financially, work, whatever. Just ask yourself the question. And then remember to ask your people as well. Number six, this goes back to the uh, taco truck story. Delicious. The undisciplined pursuit of more. So not only do we get bored, but sometimes we have such a drive to do more and more that we add a whole bunch of things and none of our things are working out. So instead of having one problem, we have four problems and it becomes overwhelming. So we wake up one day and we say, screw it. And we walk away from all of it. Sure. The undisciplined pursuit of more. You see it happen to companies. You know, when Steve Jobs left Apple the first time, uh, he came back and they had over 300 different SKUs of products and they got into the undisciplined pursuit of more. They were going to make a little bit of everything. Yep. Right. And one of his key decisions was to narrow that down to the, what did, what did nine, the one thing book say that nine, 10, 11 oh, different, okay. different product SKUs, yep. right? Focus. So sometimes the reason you're unhappy with your life or your business or your job is because of the undisciplined pursuit of more. You're taking on more and more jobs, more and more responsibilities, or you're adding more and more products, services, divisions, or whole separate businesses, investments, distractions. I talked to a gentleman last week at an event we hosted. Believe it or not, we hosted an event last week. And I said, tell me what you do. And he said, I do this business. What else? He said, I do this business. What else? And he said, I do this business. I said, how are they doing? He's like, I'm struggling trying to keep up with everything. Obviously, you have three businesses, right? And let me ask you a question. Is that one very good? He's like, no, not really. Is that one very good? No, not really. He says, is that one very good? He's like, eh, it's okay. I'm like, so you have three shitty businesses, right? Wouldn't it be easier if you just had one crappy one and then you went and fixed that one and you made it awesome and then you added a second one? Like, there's no reason to try to balance three bad things. Three bad things. Now, we're not saying you shouldn't have multiple businesses, folks. We're just saying make sure you've got the one working. But undisciplined is on. the key right. word in there, right? Exactly. Like the pursuit of more in and of itself, not a reason people end up quitting necessarily, but, but I'm in multi-level marketing, and I'm going to sell you this and this and this and this because I don't sell any of them well, so I'm going to sell you all of them, <laughs> right? No, figure out your one area, focus on it, be disciplined. Okay, the last one. Oh, last one. Last one, seven. A fear of missing out. A fear of missing FOMO, out. FOMO, they call that. Yes. If you're a millennial, you will call that FOMO. Yes. As Bob so adequately Not a millennial out. or even close, by the way, but I am hip. You are eh. very, very, very <laughs> hip. <laughs> FOMO. They want to get into whatever, but what everybody else is getting into. It creates a undisciplined pursuit of more. It creates financial crisis. It, it allows us to uh, experience failure. Maybe we create ceilings, whatever that might be. We have a fear of missing out. So we try to add whatever that other thing is or do whatever the other people are doing. I see that in business all the time. They hear an idea that somebody else is doing and they try to implement everything because they don't want to miss out on the fact that this person's doing the 50% off sale, and this person's doing, doing the auction, and this person, whatever, fear of missing out. You don't have to be good at everything that your competitors do. Sometimes it's important just to be good at what you do first. Yes. So, Chad, walk us through the, the seven reasons why the seven causes of us wanting to quit. All right, here we go. The seven reasons that we want to quit. Number one, Ben told us was boredom. And remember, these aren't things just for you. These are why people might quit you. Number one is boredom. Number two, we hit a ceiling. Number three, financially stressed. Number four, we're experiencing failure. Number five, personal issues add weight to our lives. Number six, the undisciplined pursuit for more. And number seven, fear of missing out. We do not want you to have FOMO when it comes to the Win, Make, Give podcast. So make sure you're subscribed so that you know when each and every episode is dropped for you to listen to. Also, join us in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash Win, Make, Give, where we remind you about the episodes and we want you to join us as we talk about the episodes. Don't miss out on these opportunities. Until our next episode, as always, do good.